My name is Miriam Friedman. I'm a Holocaust survivor. I'm a president of the largest organization of Holocaust survivors in South Florida. And I just, before I go any further, I just want you to know that I was only 13 years old. Now, when you look at me or you look at the video, you see an older person. But I was a very happy, go lucky child, just 13 years old when the war broke out. I come from a very affluent family. I was a very popular girl, very long black hair, always with a lot of boys, like every girl in this age. And at one day when the war broke out in September, my whole world turned upside down. I had one youngest child, a younger sister, a young mother and father. And the end came in 1939, in September, when the Germans walked into our city. The deportation process, yes. First of all, let me come to it, if I may. I was five years in a ghetto. I'm sure you all know what is a ghetto. A ghetto is a small area with all the people from the city. I come from one of the biggest cities, the biggest city of Poland, the biggest industrial city of Poland, of, second biggest industrial city of Europe. And all the Jews were thrown into a small area, enough maybe for 10,000 people, we had 350,000 people in that small area. We got living quarters, enough maybe for two dogs, for the whole family. Everything went against us. The winters were very severe. We didn't have anything to warm up our quarters. Just to tell you an incident, how cold it was. I had long black hair. My mother washed my hair one night the next morning, I couldn't get up to go to work because everybody had to go to work. It was free labor. Children from seven years on had to go to work. My hair was frozen to the wall, and my mother had to cut off my hair to be able to go to work. My hair was defrosted the following spring. The torches, the hunger, I don't know if anybody could comprehend what it means to be cold and hungry. That if we had a piece from, peel from a potato, was good. We're not talking about bread. Today, if we don't have bread, we have cake. But that was not so. There were wagons in the street passing by and picking up the death from hunger and from cold. And then after five, five years came an order that all the factories, by factory in rotation, should go to a certain place where we're going to be sent away. They told us to a better living conditions and we're going to have the work and food to come there. So we came to that place and you take as Little as, as little and as much as you can on your back. And we took a few little things. At the time of deportation, there, I didn't have my mother anymore. My mother died, she was only 39 years old, from starvation on my, on my hands. Her last words were, my dear child, will you ever have enough bread to satisfy your hunger? My father died from hunger. I only had my little sister. She was a little girl. I took her by my hand, and we went to the place where to go for the deportation. When we came to deportations, then we were all sent on trains. We didn't know where we're going because they said we're going to better living quarters. After a day and a night in the trains, we were st standing room only. No toilet facilities, nothing, no food. I will never forget arriving to Auschwitz. 
I looked around and I saw people running, women, men running. The men, sh the women shaved, naked, their breasts hanging out, not dressed. I said, oh my God, this is a, a crazy house. Where did they send us? Not realizing that I will look an hour later like that and that my sister will be taken away from me. My sister was taken away. She cried. She said, I want to go with my sister. I can't live without her. So the German kicked her. And he said, you're going to see your sister later. You will go to school. Your sister will go to work. Not realizing that I will never see her again, she was taken to the chimney. That was my first day when I arrived to Auschwitz. <laughs>